welcome back YouTube family to the second half of the love chapter found at 1 Corinthians 13. So we're going to go on the second half right here and we're going to finish this up. And we're reading at first, we left off at 1 Corinthians 13 and we're on the 4th. We are actually on the, I'm going to say the 6th verse. But I want to start off on love 4, the 4th verse, I'm going to read over that. And it says, love is very patient and kind. Let me repeat that again. It's at 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. That's the love chapter in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 13. All of it is love, but that's supposed to be the love chapter. Talking about love. At 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. And I am on the... I'm going to start off right here on the 4th verse. And it says, love is very patient and kind, never jealous or envious, never boastful or proud, never hearty or selfish or rude. Love does not demand its own way. It is not irritable or touchy. It does not hold grudges and will hardly even notice when others do it wrong. It is never glad about injustice. And we're going to start right here on the 6th verse. It is never glad about injustice. You know, um, the truth, the Bible is full of truths. And when somebody does something that is not, is going against the word, we shouldn't be rejoicing in that. You know, we should be praying for those people. Because justice wins, that's when we're happy. When something is good, we're supposed to rejoice and be happy in it and be happy about those people that have got justice. But then when sin and all this other stuff take over and people wrong getting they did something wrong and they didn't get the right time they should have got we shouldn't be happy for that we should be happy when things are right and right standing with god you know it's important to to know that when injustices are done that we shouldn't be we shouldn't be for that we should be praying about that because we want justice to win we always should be on the the right side and always rooting for those people that are right and not in the wrong and for those and we should always be uplifting our sisters and brothers when they're in the right and so when injustices are not don't happen you know that's not a good a good time that's a time to be in prayer it's a lot of things that we don't agree with that's going on in the world today a lot of cases a lot of uh things happening in our world a lot of things that are not right a lot of things that we don't agree with and we should be in prayer because prayer, there are some things we can't change. We can vote. We can go out there and, and pick it. We can go out there and on the lines and, and walk and show our rights. But the best thing we can do is pray because prayer changes things and God works behind the scenes. And when you believe in prayer, God is working, you know, and we just got to pray. I mean, we need, the Bible says to pray without ceasing. Every day we should be in prayer. Every minute we got to keep praying because there's so much going on around us that we're not understanding. There's things changing in our world today. And it's like we're living in the last days. There's so much things going on that we got to pray for one another. And I believe that part of love is praying for one another and uplifting one another, but mostly in prayer because God can work while we praying. They said one person can put a thousand demons of pride, but two can put 10,000 demons of pride. When we pray in and just come together in prayer, where there's more people praying, I think there's more prayer, there's more power there in numbers so we can put the devil under our feet in prayer. If we come together and just pray, wow, things begin to change in your life when you pray. So just remember that. And professing for injustice is things that we can't do nothing about. They got away with it. Okay. We're going to pray because we know God. And it says, It never glad about injustices, but rejoices whenever truth wins. That's what we do. Rejoices when we win. And it says, Wins out. I'm in 13 here. So I got to remember what to follow here. And then it says in the seventh verse, if you love someone, you'll be loyal to him, no matter what the cost, 
You always believe in him, always expect the best of him, and always stand your ground in defending him. Now, that's not only a natural man or woman or brother or sister in the Lord. It's also talking about the Lord right there, you know, because God, let me put these back on so I can see here. And it says, if you love someone, you will be loyal to him. You will stick by that person. You're not going to go and do them wrong behind their backs. You're not going to be putting them down behind their back, talking about them behind their back. Unless it's something that's going to help that person or, or you're doing it to edify them or, or build them up. You ain't to be talking about that person, putting them down. You're going to be loyal to them. You're going to be faithful to them. You're going to be there by their side. You're going to lift them up. That's what loyalty is. Standing by that person through the good and through the bad. Standing there loyal. You can depend on that person. You know that they're there for you. But you know who's there for us most of the time, God. We can always depend on him. He will never leave us nor will he forsake us. The love of God. And loving God is like that. You're going to be, he's going to be loyal to us. He's going to be there for us. He's going to have our back. He's going to fight our battles. Amen. That's real love right there. God fighting our battles. So not only in, in 1 Corinthians 13, they talk about the, the characteristics of what real love is that we should be having toward each other and in our own life, but it's also talking about what God is. You can also relate to God in here and how the love that he has for us. Especially in verse 7 and down, it's like the love that God has for us. You know, because who can love you like that? We can't expect a man or a woman to love us like that. Where they are loyal to us to the point, to the T. Well, some of us are like that. We loyal to our children. We loyal to our husband. We loyal to our wives. We loyal to our best friends and to our, our mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters. We loyal. We're there. If they need us, we're there. But right here... Some days family ain't there. Some days a husband and wife is tired. Some days the children in their own worlds. But when you, uh, God said that he will never leave nor forsake us. That's wonderful to know that we got somebody on, on our sides, on our side, no matter what we are going through. And that's got our backs. That's the loyalty. It says you will always believe in him. Always expect the best of him. And that's how it is with God. We look up to him. We believe in him. We ex we believe no matter what. That's how it is with us Christians as believing in God. God, you can do anything but fail. I believe you, God. You can work it all out. You, you're there for our good and for your glory. Whatever it is we're going through, there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. We got to believe that. There's nothing too hard for him. But we just got to have the faith. And we got to believe that he's working it all out. He's working everything out in our lives. And he says, you will always believe in him. I believe you, God, through it all. No matter what people sin, no matter what I feel, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what my past says, I believe in your word that you said it. That's all she wrote. That's it. I believe you, God. And he says, you always, you always believe in him. Always expect the best of him. That means God wants us to have the best. God wants us to have good things. He says, what man going to give his, his child things that are not good? What If you if a, a child come ask for stone, a bread, you're going to give him a stone to eat? That's not God. God will give you good gifts and good things. And he wants us to have the best. Father knows best and he wants us to have the best. And it's in him. Like I said, whatever we need is in him. And he says, I always expect the best of him and I always stand your ground in defending him. God is our defense. He's our strong tower, amen? He, he will fight our battles. Whatever we go on through the day, the battle don't belong to us, but the battle belongs to the Lord. And he is your defense and he will fight your battles and he will go through with you. Whatever you're going through today, that's nothing too hard for God. And God will give you the strength and the courage that you need to go through it. He will go through that pain. He will go through that rejection with you. He will go through when you're feeling alone. He will go through when you lost your job. He will go through when you lost your home. He will go through with you through the fire. You're going through a divorce. He will go through you through the fire with you. 
when you don't have no money. He will go through the fire with you when you're sick in your body. He will go through the fire with you when you lost hope and you don't know how to cope and you're full of dope. God will go through with you. He is there with you. He will never leave you, forsake you. He loves you so much that he died for you. He loved you so much that he rose the third day, came, walked the earth, felt everything you felt. And then he came and left, sitting at the right hand of God. And then he's making an intercession for you. And he left you, not alone, but with the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, that is there with you. That's how much he loves you. He loved you so much. That he didn't want us to just go to earth and go back to dust to dust and and nothing else was there after that. But he loved you that you can have a chance at eternal life. A chance today that you can have a chance to come to him and know him as your personal savior. A chance that when you leave this earth, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's love. That's real love. He sacrificed it. He, he In the Garden of Gethsemane, he bled so much that he cried tears. They were coming down like blood. He, he, he For us, he shed his blood on Calvary for us, for you, for me, for anybody that would come in and accept him as their Savior. He died that you can live. That's real love right there. That's real love. Beat 39 times with a cat of a nine tails. Little old string seen with sharp things on it and hit in his back where the blood just flowed out. Pierced in his side where the water and the blood flowed out. There's power in the blood. The nails stuck through his hands, wrist, where the blood was through all this, all the tendons and everything else for your sin. He died that you can have a chance at eternal life. The love of God. That's important. That's the most important love that we have. That he gave. Love gives. He gave. That we can live. And he says right here. It says all the special gifts and powers from God. I'm in the eighth verse. From God will someday come to an end. But love goes on forever. Just think how much God loves you, that he went up to prepare a place for you, that where you go, where he go, that you one day be also. Isn't that wonderful to know that? To know that you don't have to go back to dust no more, that the body, the flesh goes back to dust, but your spirit will forever be with the Lord. To know that forever, one day you'll just live with him. There'll be no more tears. There'll be no more pain, no more sadness. There'll be no more madness. There'll be nothing in heaven but peace, love, joy, and Jesus. And all your, your loved ones and heavenly hosts and everything will be there. Isn't it wonderful to note also that you can have heaven on earth? That while you're here, you can be happy in relationship with Christ. Knowing that he's with you every day and night. Knowing that he will never leave you. Knowing that you can talk to him boldly and come boldly for the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Knowing that you are loved just as you are. You are loved. And every day, you look in that mirror and tell yourself, I am beautiful and I am loved. I am loved. No matter what my past has been like. No matter what people have said about me. No matter what I feel about myself. No matter if my mother and father are not there. No matter if I, my friends didn't left me. Family and turned their backs on me. I am loved by a most high God. I am accepted. I am wonderfully made in his image. I am loved. And to know that you are loved, and if, if nobody says they loved you, tell yourself, I love you. And know that God loves you too. Just know that you are loved. Amen. And it says, all the special and gifts, I'm reading eight again, and powers from God will someday come to an end. 
But love goes on forever. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will remain the same. And the love of God is forever. Infinity forever. It says love goes on forever. Someday prophecy, speaking in unknown languages, all these gifts that God has given men and special knowledge, these gifts will disappear. Now we know so little, even with our special gifts. And the preacher of those most gifted is still so poor. That means God reveals things to our pastors, to our prophets, to our teachers, to ministers, to us. He reveals things to us. But those things will disappear. That's just the little things that God has revealed to us. But just imagine, they said, eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard what God has in store for those that love him. I mean, it's just those little things right now that we're knowing in parts of the word. But once we leave this body and get to heaven, God's going to reveal you more to us. More, so much beautiful, so much wonderful stuff that we didn't even know while we was here on this earth. But your pastors, your prophets, your evangelists, all of those people are there to help you, to give you a word. We're here to help each other and give us a word. Your teachers are there to be to teach you. Your pastors is there to, to guide you, to be a shepherd over you. Your prophet is there to uplift you, to bring your word in due season, in dry seasons. A prophetess and a prophet is there to give your word to uplift you. Your evangelist is there to, to lift up the church, to, to evangelize it, to, to renew the saints, to to bring word, fresh anointing of rhema, the living word of God, to, to restore. That's what the evangelist is there. To awaken the church. To, to, to You know, we all need sometimes a lift. We need to be uplifted. We need to be, you know, every day we need to be encouraged. Sometimes we get down in our spirits. You know, get that song. You know, get put your, your church music on put put a song on that's going to uplift you about jesus read your word study call somebody else up get out your problems and, and help them and and lift them up you know lift yourself and do like david did david dance and encourage yourself in the word of god sometimes we don't have people around we don't have a clutch we have to be able to encourage and uplift ourselves in the lord we have to be able to get a song down sing a song Amen. We have to praise God and, and uplift him every day and encourage yourself in the Lord. That's what you do. Because sometimes we ain't going to have all that around us. We got to know how to reach God for ourselves. Because when you go out this world, you stand alone before the Lord. No one's going to stand with you. You're going to be alone facing God. And you're going to be alone. He's going to say what you did. Not what sister so-and-so, your brother, or mother, or father did or your neighbors, or your friends did, you're going to stand there before God. He want to know what you did for him. And only what you do for Christ will last. Amen? Only what you do for him. You do not ever see a, a U-Haul behind a hearse. So you brought nothing into this world, and you'll take nothing out except Jesus. And that's the most important thing you need today, is Jesus. And it says in 11, that all these gifts, all this stuff going to disappear, but love will last forever. And it says 11, it's like this. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child does. It's like when you're a child, you're innocent. When you're a child, you're, you're more susceptible to learning. You're, you're more open to learning. You're, you know, you do childish things. When you're a child, you, you play with toys. When you're a child, you run outside. You with your friends, hanging, doing childish things. You're a child. Your mind is like a child. You're acting like a child. You think like a child. You do things like children do. That's what children do. And it says, his reason as a child does. Nothing 11. And it says, but when I became a man, my thoughts grew far beyond those of my childhood. When you became a man or a woman... You ain't doing the things like a child would do. I ain't saying I don't collect dolls and all that stuff. But I ain't sitting there. Unless it's my grandkid or something or a grandchild I'm playing with toys with them. But you don't see me sitting there playing with Barbies by my way. You don't know that. But I don't sit there and play with Barbies when my grandchild's not here. 
I'm not playing jacks. I'm not definitely out there doing no hopscotch and jump rope. It says when you became a child, a man, your, your things, your mind change, your, your body change. If a child is still in those ways, there's something wrong there. If a child is not growing, if a person is not growing in the Lord, there's something wrong there. We should all be growing in the Lord and things of God. And so when you became a man or woman, you put away those childish things, and then you got to start worrying about where I'm going to live. I got to get a job. I got to have stability. I got to be able to support myself. I got to pay my rent. I got to pay my bills. I got to cook my own food. I got to have that drilling in order to cook my food. I got to have a place to stay. Whether it's with a roommate, whether it's my own place, with my parents, I put away those childish things. Now I got to take up things as an adult and be doing these adult things. So those childish things are going away because you're not doing that no more. It says, I put away those childish things because I'm no longer that little girl. I'm a woman now, so I'm doing more womanly things and things that I got to do to live and survive. When you're a child, you're doing childish things. It's okay for a child. child should be going to the bank, can't be going to the bank paying bills. A child don't need to go to the office and worry about rent or gas bill. You know, a child don't have to worry about all of that. A child got to stay in a child's place. And that's important to know that when you get adult, you put away those childish things. And it says, in the same way at 12, we can see and understand only a little about God now, as if we are appearing in his reflection of a poor mirror. This is just a little thing, a minute that we see about God. You know, because we only know in part. We only know what he shares with us in his word. There's so much about God and so many levels of him that we don't even know unless he shares with us. Through, our, through your pastor, through your prophets, or give you a vision, or be have one of the fivefold ministries, he might work through that. But God reveals what he wants to reveal through his word. And through him, if he wants to tell us something, he will do that. But right now, it's like just little things we learn about God. Because his thoughts are up here, and his ways are up there, and our ways are down here. It says our ways and his thoughts are not the same. Our ways is different than what God is. God is up here. We're down here. You know. It says in the same way, we can see and understand only a little about God now. As we were peering at his reflection in a poor mirror. But someday we are going to see him in his completeness face to face. One day we'll see God face to face. And now in 12, it says, now all that I know is hazy and blurred. But then I will see everything clearly. Just as clearly as God sees into my heart right now. Because he's God, he sees things, he knows all. He is God and he can do that. He knows every thought before we even think it. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow. He knows what's going to happen next year. He knows our future. He knows our past. He knows everything. Nothing that we can be is done that God doesn't know about. And in 13, it says, there are three things that remain. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Faith will remain. You believe in God. You believe in things even though you don't see it. You walk by faith and not by sight. I believe God. I have faith in him. That's going to remain. You got to have faith. Everything you got to walk up, walk day by day. We walk by faith and not by sight. I believe God. If he says something, he's going to bring it to pass. I don't see it. I don't feel it. I don't know what's going to happen, but I believe him. I walk by faith. We got to live by faith. Every day is a faith walk with, with us, with God. God, whatever you're going to do is by faith. I don't have no way of doing it. I don't have no means. I don't know how it's going to be done. But I believe you and you're going to work it out by faith. Hope. Hope in what? In God. Not hope in me because I'm, we, we, you know, we, we, we don't have nothing in us. There's no hope in us. The hope is in God because one day we can, we're going to fall. That brother, sister, you got faith in it. They're going to make mistakes. But the hope is in God because he's a God, what? That is perfect and he makes no mistakes. And love, that's God. God is love. And we got to know that without, without love of God, we have nothing. We got to have the love of God in us. Amen. And it's wonderful that we learn this about love and what the real love is and what God is. And God is love. And God wants us to love one another. He wants us to, to, to 
every day put on love in our hearts and in our minds and our soul so that we can share the love of God in us. Amen. We got to remember that God is love. God loves you above all, above everything. He says he wants us to love him with all our hearts, mind, soul, and strength. And he wants all of us. Amen. God wants you. He loves you today. And just know that you are loved. You are loved. And begin to love you just the way you are. God loves you. He loves you. your mind. He loves your hair. He loves your body. He loves your smile. He loves your personality. Love who you are. And if there's something on you that you can change, like me, I'm trying to lose this weight. You can do that, then do that. But well, if you can't change something, don't change it. There's nothing you can do. That's just the way you are. God loves you today. And thank you for joining in. Remember to subscribe. Remember to like. Remember to share. I hope somebody got something out of the word of God today. And I and remember that I love you. But above all, God loves you today. Thank you for reading 1 Corinthians 13 with me. And thank you today for sharing the word of God with someone else today too. God bless y'all. Bye-bye now.